Thank you, Madam Chair. Dr. Pilkey, um, just to begin with the basics, can you help us understand the difference between um, localized um, efforts that might have um, <clears throat> and, and geoforming efforts? Uh, from, a, from a policy perspective, weather modification, as, as you heard from uh, Mr. Martz, is, seeks to affect rainfall over, say, a drainage, um, a ski area, a small area. Geoengineering, as it's defined by the IPCC, seeks to counter the effects of global climate change, um, so at the much larger scale. Um, and usually, the effects of climate change, for better or worse, are measured in global average surface temperature. So affecting the, that metric is, is the focus of geoengineering. And Mr. Martz, I think, um, and I saw in your notes that you refer to it as that cloud seeding or a lot of these efforts really don't have, and you had a term for it, um, I'm trying to get back to that, where it, the, the impact is, it's, it's hard to get beyond so many kilometers, right? Correct, yeah, above, um, let me find it here just so I get my terms right. You had a word for it. Mesoscale? Yes. Yes, um, and there's different levels of, of, of mesoscale. Um, so basically, so I said here, so um, all in all, cloud seeding is incapable of altering weather patterns on what Orlansky in 1975, that's a peer-reviewed paper, defines as the uh, mesoscale level, particularly meso-alpha, which is greater than or equal to 200 uh, kilometers. So above that, that horizontal distance, 200 kilometers, there's really absolutely like no effect. That, that, way, that much we do know. But on um, small, much smaller scales than 200 kilometers, um, there is a very much a lot of uncertainty as to the efficacy of cloud seeding um, yeah. from a rainfall and precipitation standpoint. And the big reason for this is because natural variability is so large. Yeah, yeah, so th I, I, I hear you. So I think if folks are listening or paying attention, you can definitively say, you got, I mean, you're a PhD, you're, um, you're a meteor meteorologist. You can definitively say that um, these are cloud seeding, while it may occur, it's probably not occurring as often as people think because it's, it's, uh, its effects are unknown um, or not certain. It's, um, and, and then in addition, it only has re affects a small region. Would you both agree with that? Yes, uh, f for all the effort that's been put into weather modification, uh, if it is having an effects, they're not large enough that we can really see them very clearly. I would agree to that, yes. Would you say that in general we kind of have a little bit of an arrogance about our impact on, on this planet? Very much so. And I also find that it's uh, a lot with uh, climate change as well. Obviously, again, I'm going to just put a disclaimer here before I am called a climate denier by people. I agree that CO2 is a greenhouse gas, and yes, all else being equal, it does cause warming in the lower atmosphere. However, how that translates to changes in extreme weather is very much more complicated. And I find that there's a, a very uh, stark parallel between people who claim that you know, hurricanes are being caused, is ca are caused by cloud seeding and that they're able to control hurricanes as well as people who think that hurricanes are caused by you know, a one part per 10,000 increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide. And in fact, in my uh, uh, chart here that I show, shows data that shows that neither hurricane frequency nor intensity as measured by the cumulative cycle and energy index have increased since 1990. And that's data from Colorado State University, um, actually one of the schools that uh, Dr. Pilkey's father taught at, I believe. Um, and there's also no increase that there's an increase in rapid intensification events globally. This is a chart going back to 1990. This was provided to me by Dr. Phil Klotzbeck, um, also from CSU. And it shows that there's no increase since 1990 in the number of rapid intensification events, which is the frequency, which is a measure of how fast hurricanes intensify, and it's defined as a 30 knot increase or greater in 24 hours. Um, so there have been increases in heavy rainfall in some regions, and there's been decreases in other regions, and some of that could be tied to a warmer, you know, atmosphere and the clausius clapron relation. But overall. Um, the idea that we are able to control weather, even through climate change, is largely grossly overstated. Thank you. I yield back the rest of my time.